I used to play the Game Boy Advance a lot when it first came out. I found out that there's a great community online of people wanting to make their own games on the old Game Boy Advance. Just for homebrew and just for fun, the website gbadev.org has a lot of great games and demos where you can see a lot of different people's games and you can play them and sometimes they include the source code to see how the game was made. And last year there was actually a Game Boy Advance competition with lots of entries, with several different places and prize money. It answers a lot of questions on how to get started. And then when the competition ended, you can actually see the games that people made and play them. I submitted an entry myself, but it was really fun to see what other people made and came up with, and all their creative ideas. And some of these games are actually really fun to play. And a lot of you have been asking me how I actually program for the Game Boy Advance, and I've been meaning to make a video on this. Well, there's actually a new competition going on right now. Currently there's only two months left to enter. If you still have time, you can watch this video and learn how to get started and make your own game to enter. Or if the competition has already ended, you can still learn how the Game Boy Advance works, and then check back for competitions going on in the future. There's even a Discord where you can chat with other people. Anyway, there's a pretty cool Game Boy Advance retro programming community online that I think you might like and enjoy. And one of the first things to learn is that there isn't one particular way to make a game. There's actually several different modes that the Game Boy Advance provides. Mode 3 can draw the full screen's 240 by 160 pixels with a wide range of different colors, but unfortunately it only has one buffer. So as you write to that buffer, you're drawing at the same time, so you may have screen tearing. Now Mode 4 does have double buffering, but you have to draw two pixels at the same time, and you're limited to a 256 color palette. So you don't get the full range of colors, you're having to draw two pixels at once. So then you have Mode 5, which does have double buffering. It does have the full range of colors, but they limit the screen resolution to 160 by 128 pixels. This is actually the mode I prefer, and drawing fewer pixels is going to help us with our frame rate, which is so important for the Game Boy Advance. So okay, let's start with Mode 5. Let's go to the gbadev.org website and go to the search button, and we're going to search for Mode 5. That first option is great. It's made by Decay, and he provides the source code to draw in Mode 3, Mode 4, and Mode 5. So let's create an empty folder on the desktop and save this file in that folder. I'm going to clear out everything and just leave those three files in that mode5 folder. We get the .gba ROM file, we get our C main file, and a Windows batch file. So you need a GBA emulator to run the ROM file. Some people like MGBA, but for simplicity, let's just use the Visual Boy Advance. So we can download and put that Visual Boy Advance emulator in the exact same folder. And all we have to do is drag and drop the ROM file onto the emulator. You'll see that it's very small, but we have the option to change the video and scale it up by maybe three or four times. So what we're looking at is mode 5, it doesn't even fill the full screen, and he's drawing red in one buffer and then blue on the other and then flipping between the two. And if you already have an IDE program, it'll open the C file, but honestly all you really need is Notepad++. Just a simple Notepad program that recognizes it's a C file and color codes everything accordingly. So that's our C file, I'm going to delete the ROM file, and I'm going to open our batch file in the Notepad++ program. And you can tell it's looking for DevKit Advance. That is a compiler that'll make the C code into a ROM file. So let's go ahead and download that and add it to our same directory folder. So the programs in this folder are gonna compile our C file into the .gba ROM file. But let's clear our batch file, change to our current directory that we're in so it can find that DevKit Advance folder. It's a C file, so we use GCC to compile it. We can use object copy to create our main.gba file. And then we can pause to read to see what happened if there's any errors or how it compiled. So let's click the make file and see what happens. And there we have it. It actually created this main.gba file. And if we run it, it's the same program that we saw earlier. I'll open the C file to try to create an error and show you what that looks like. For instance, what if this value was way out of range? Hopefully our compiler will spot this at line 62. The command prompt is going to show us if we have any errors in our code. It will create a ROM file that we can use the Visual Boy Advance emulator to play. You can move this over to a flash cart and run this file on the actual GBA hardware. And so that's your basic foundation on how to compile and make a Game Boy Advance ROM. So I wrote my own starter program from scratch. So let's run the batch file and see what it looks like. In the upper left corner we have throttled the game engine to run at 15 frames per second. So whether you're drawing a few things on screen or a lot, everything should move at the same consistent speed. So we have a constant frame rate, we can draw pixels, we can clear the screen, and we can draw a player and move him around with the arrow keys. So let's see how the code works. I moved a few of the defined variables into this gba.h file. These addresses are how we're going to actually access the Game Boy Advance. For instance, this is the video RAM's front buffer and then back buffer, so we can swap between the two. Remember the screen that we're drawing is actually very small, so here are the two addresses I'm going to use to scale the screen up. And here is the address for the buttons and how we're going to distinguish between each button. I need to keep track of the constant frame rate, so I need a timer. Not all memory is going to be stored in the same place, so we have different variables to define that location. So I kind of thought of this weird example. So the milk represents data. So you can get in your car, drive to the store, pick up the milk, and then drive back home. Or you can just walk next door to your neighbor. Or you can just keep some milk in the refrigerator right at home with you. 
and the neighbor represents the ERAM. It's much quicker to get to, but you can only hold about 256 kilobytes of data. And your home is the IRAM. The IRAM is small, just about 32 kilobytes, but we can store functions that we're going to use quite often to help speed up the frame rate. And these all relate to the sound and music that we're going to add, and how we play notes at different frequencies and durations. So the Game Boy Advance screen has 240 by 160 pixels, but we're using mode 5, which only draws 160 by 128 pixels. So the idea I have is to limit that screen to only draw 120 by 80 pixels, and then we can double the length and the width so each pixel is drawn twice as big, so it can fill up the full screen. So that's why when I draw to the frame buffer, I need to keep track of that original 160 pixels, but the actual screen of pixels I'll be drawing is only 120 by 80 pixels. Each pixel will be signed a 15-bit color, so that's 5 bits for red, 5 for green, and 5 for blue, and each RGB value can go from 0 to 31. So I created a player struct to hold both the X and Y coordinate for that pixel. I'm going to clear the screen by creating a double for loop and setting that pixel value to a mostly bluish color. The GBA has 10 buttons, and here are the if statements I can use to check for each button pressed. I have an initialize function to set that player position at the beginning, and here's the main function, where I'm telling the compiler that I'll be using mode 5, and a timer so I can keep track of the frame rate, and here are the two variables that are actually scaling the screen. You can see what happens if I set it back to 256, but I'm dividing it by 2 to give us the full screen. And this timer variable counted up to a very large number every second, so I scaled down that number a lot, so now it goes from 0 to 15 and then resets to 0 every second. So my frame rate variable is going to increase by one unit 15 times a second and then reset. And then finally I want to make sure all the scan lines went through so we have no screen tearing. Once that is done it checks if the back buffer is drawn, then draw the front. If we're on the front, then draw the back. So we're swapping between the two frame buffers. I actually improved our batch file, so let me show you how it works. We still have the same current directory path, I added echo off to clean up the command prompt. I added this linker to add in the math.h file, and I'm now checking if there's any errors on the command prompt to go ahead and pause so I can read it. But if there are no errors, then go ahead and compile a .gba file, and then you can delete these other files that aren't needed after compiling, and then since there's no errors, go ahead and start our gba file. So I was just going to share this starter file with you, but I wanted to make a more developed game too. So here's my simple game that I made from my starter file. So let's quickly take a look at the code. Most of this should already look familiar to you, but let's jump into the main function. So what I have is a global variable called game state, and I'm checking if it's set to zero, then you're showing the title screen, you're playing the title music, drawing the title image. If any button is pressed, then you're jumping into game state one, which is the actual game, where I clear the background, play the game song, check for any updates like collision detection and player animation, check for any buttons, and of course draw the player and the fireball image too. If there's a collision, we jump into the end screen where you play the end song and draw the end screen. And then I hold for three seconds and then reset to the first screen. This is another advantage of having a consistent frame rate. So I know there's 15 frames for one second. So if I times that by three, that should take three seconds. So every image that I'm drawing is being drawn by the same function. So let's take a look at that. So again, it's just a double for loop and instead of using the RGB to set a value, I'm reading from a texture array. So let me show you how we created those images. Every texture is being read from this texture folder. I create any kind of image I want in a photo editing software, and I save it as a bitmap. On the gbadev.org website, there's a section called Tools, and here I can search for tools to help with graphics. Many of these are good, but I found that this GBA graphics converter worked perfect for me. To convert it into the correct array, I first import the image, and then I make sure to select the bitmap mode 65k colors. And that's pretty much it. You just create your output file. It then just created a C file that if we open it, created a couple things at the top that we don't need so we can delete. But other than that, this is perfect. So here our array is called title map. So then I can pass that array as a pointer into our function. I'm going to hold that color value and check if it is above zero. So in other words, if I create black pixels, it won't be drawn at all. So it's our alpha channel in a way. So you're probably going to want some music for your game. The GBA can play actual sample files, but it's a little easier just to play those iconic retro square wave notes. So I wrote out and saved all the possible notes in this array. And then to write a song, I simply just pick and choose the notes I want to play, using zero for pauses. So I actually just chose some random notes, and then made some edits after listening to it, until it sounded okay. And then I wrote a function that goes through each of the notes in our song array, pick out the actual note, and I initialize the songs in our initialize function where I can set the speed, and even the number of notes in the song, and if I want the song to repeat or not. So you could speed it up very fast and set it to not repeat to create a sort of sound effect. 
So my personal goal for this video was just to explain the best I can the fundamentals to make a game on the Game Boy Advance. There's obviously more advanced techniques that maybe I can explain in another video if you're interested. So those are the two programs I wanted to show you. So hopefully you learned something and maybe you have time to enter a game into the contest or check back for any contests in the future. I hope you at least found this interesting and thank you again for watching and I hope to see you next time.